This is literally one of the creepiest places I've ever been. I'm like looking over my shoulder because I'm waiting for like a dead body to fall on me or something. Saddam used to sit, sit on this huge golden throne. Exactly, that's where he used to hang out and talk to his family and friends and loved ones. That's like Nazi shit. It's like Hitler shit. Shukran. What's up everyone? My name is Drew Binsky. Today I am in Babylon in the central part of Iraq and I am exploring Saddam Hussein's former palace. It is mind-blowing. I spent the last hour and a half here and I'm gonna take you guys all around this abandoned place which was once a beautiful palace not too long ago. After a few days of exploring Baghdad, which was nothing short of spectacular, the real Iraqi adventure has just begun. Our trip continued southbound to Babylon, a place I had first heard about in my elementary school classroom. Turns out, it's one of the most spectacular places I've ever visited on planet Earth. Babylonian history dates back to the 19th century BC, and at one point, it was the largest city in the world with 200,000 residents. Today, only ruins remain, but they carry on many stories of the Bible, the world's first known civil code, and the death place of Alexander the Great. But I'm saving the rest of Babylon for next Sunday's video, where I wander deep into the ancient walls and ruins. The story you're gonna hear about right now takes a little bit of a left turn and is probably as creepy as any story I've ever told you. About to head inside of Saddam Hussein's former palace, which is now a big empty building but a new building because it was only built a couple decades ago. Wow. So I'd be lying to you if I didn't say it was a little bit scary walking around this palace because there's dark rooms everywhere. I feel like a body is gonna be hanging somewhere or someone's gonna jump out at you or something. I have that instinct that I'm ready to run. For those who aren't aware, Saddam Hussein served as president of Iraq from 1979 until 2003. His rule was a repressive dictatorship and was marked by costly and unsuccessful wars against neighboring countries as well as genocides against minority groups like the Kurdish. The total number of Iraqis killed during Saddam's regime is estimated at over a quarter million. And rightfully so, he was publicly executed in 2006 after being convicted of crimes against humanity by the Iraqi court. In other words, the same people who elected him into power are the ones that killed him. Throughout his years in power, Saddam was notorious for building massive palaces across Iraq as a sign of dominance and as a way to leave his legacy. One of those palaces overlooked the ancient ruins of Babylon, and we literally discovered it as we drove into the region. It's really, really grand. This place is amazing, majestic. Now all vandalized, of course, because after Saddam's fall and death, people just took everything of value and just vandalized the place, painting on the walls, broke the windows. Right. But you can feel how big it once was. Super. What, majestic. just 30 years ago, 40 years ago? This place is just totally abandoned. There's nothing here anymore, but you can feel how it was once amazing. Look at these little pipes here. For anybody who loves to explore places, this is like a playground. Look at the outlet converters here. Oh my God. Everything is just complete dusted, old. God, I'm already lost in here. I was told by locals that Saddam Hussein spent tens of millions of dollars building this giant, and I mean giant complex that sits on top of an artificially made hill with the best views of Babylon. Wow, look at this. This project was not only nationalistic, but also narcissistic, as you can see by the many faces of him at the entrance. In essence, Saddam tried to rebuild Babylon and he wanted every Iraqi to know it. This is crazy. Oh, wow. But now, 18 years after Saddam's fall from power, his palace has become totally abandoned. All the rooms are still intact, but broken glass and graffiti are found all over the place. The fact that we were the only ones there made it terrifying to experience, and I honestly couldn't believe my eyes. This crazy amount of barbed wire just... Dude, I'm not going in there, have fun. Why do you think that's the way to get upstairs? She told me that they like to go under a fence. Oh. So sketchy, man. So much barbed wire and just like nails everywhere. All the nails have to be really, really careful where you step. 
And then obviously this place, I imagine, is full of rats, because <laughs> all this darkness and felt. What is it? Hidden chamber? Hidden chamber? <laughs> Whoa, man. Dude. Wow. A hidden chamber in Saddam's Palace. We're just literally in a tiny hidden chamber walking on water bottles. This place just screams danger all over the walls. It's so bizarre. We're going up again. Should we go to the darkness? Check out the rooms there? Yeah. Let's go. Pitch black. Do you want to go in? Sure. It's probably just a, like a wardrobe or something. Trying to get on the top, on the rooftop. And I think we have found the spot. We have to go through all these crazy little doors and windows to get up here. I think this is the spot, man. Are we gonna get yelled at for being up here? Hope not. These stairs are like busted. Dude, the view of Babylon from here. Oh baby, how cool is this place? Amazing, I'm really amazed, dude. Not just Babylon, which is mind boggling, but also the palace. The palace is simply, if you like dark tourism, this yeah. place is one of the top 10 best things I've ever done. Like abandoned shit. Yeah, Monrovia, we traveled in West Africa together and we found a really cool abandoned uh, hotel with a pool and stuff. What's crazy is all the graffiti surrounding this entire palace from over the last few years, people coming here and just writing stuff. I don't know what it says because it's on Arabic, but it's really interesting how uh, artsy this place has become. Love abandoned places. Whenever I get the chance to explore them, always do it. What a crazy experience the last two hours of my life has been. My adrenaline is still pumping and I don't know if I'll ever witness something this bizarre ever again. This is probably the coolest abandoned building I've ever been in. And uh, I did this video quickly. It's really just a sneak peek. Um, there's a lot more to see, a lot more rooms to go in, but truth be told, I have a lot more of Babylon to explore and the sun is going down. So I wanted to just make a, just a story separately on Saddam Hussein's palace. Absolutely mind blowing place. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more content all around Iraq on Instagram at Drubinsky. Send me a message there. Would love to hear from you guys and uh, move it onwards to the next. Later, Saddam. Peace. Quickly before you go, if you're trying to get in touch with me and I haven't responded, the best way to do so is by actually texting my phone, 310-349-3854. I am going one by one and responding to all your messages on there. And I also have a really cool email newsletter. If you click the link in the description below, you'll be able to join where I give you travel updates and travel advice and tips. And I also give a bunch of discounts and promotions from travel brands and companies that I work with. So with that being said, have a wonderful day guys and I'll see you next week for more Iraq videos. Okay, the final checkpoint, which I failed to, I thought we already hit the final one. It was a bit more intense. I held us for about five minutes, asked a bunch of questions, show the passport, show the COVID test. And then all the, all the smiles came when they saw his passport. Oh, he's from Spain. Oh, Barcelona or Madrid, every time. Every single time. It's a blessing, man. You're so lucky. Really blessed. Not one time in all of my travels to every country has anyone ever brought up a football team or anything because I don't know about football as any American doesn't. But this guy. And the thing, the best thing is if he's a Madrid fan, we instantly connect. If he's a Barcelona fan, I throw him off saying it's a shitty team and he really doesn't expect that kind of answer, so. No, but it still eases the conversation. Yeah, exactly. Because it's very tense when you first pull over and then all of a sudden you're Habibi and smiling and laughing. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and ring that little bell so you can get notified on all my upcoming videos as I take you to every single country in the world.